Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, over the last five days, I have decided to do what I've done in the past. That's right, that's right! And I'm sorry, uh, apologize for that. Um, <laughs> just, just, uh, something just comes over me with that character. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there's a problem with this device. Nobody asked you. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. I don't want to choose what happened. Get out of here. We ain't going to scan. We ain't going to fix. I mean, that's ESET. That's my virus scan. It detected that there was a connection. <laughs> we have a connection. Anyway, I'm installing some programs and downloading some programs. And while I'm doing that, I figured I'd talk with you guys. The first thing I wanted to talk with you about is I now get it. All this time, we're going to talk about money in a second, uh, or what they call money. But all this time, I, I finally get it. I, I watch these news programs, and they say, Well, he failed to obey the commands of a police officer. Go ahead, do your research on how often that statement is made. Well, you must obey the police. Excuse me? You must obey the police. Ladies and gentlemen, leave my KMS alone. Kiss my anus. I mean, you know, kiss my... Uh, well, that's what KMS really stands for. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we know that the police in America came from what's known as spook hunters. Um, when they used to go and chase after, pay attention, runaway slaves. I've been watching a TV series called 61st Street. It's in, I think, an AME uh, broadcast. I can only assure you, when I first, the first episode, it, the way they did it, it, the way the person ran from the police, that didn't make any sense. It, it just, it, it's like, I'm sorry. Don't don't take this the wrong way, ladies and gentlemen. It's like some white person created a script for black people. I mean, that's the series at some points felt that way. Like they came up with a scenario that would really happen, and and it didn't it didn't really fit fit. But the rest of the show, including the last one, literally jerked all over emotional strings that last episode i was you talk about somebody who was angry and going yeah at the same time so 61st street if you haven't seen it i don't recommend it recommend it but i am letting you know that i liked what they were trying to do with that series i don't know what they're going to do with the series i think it may have been just that one little short season for that aspect of 61st Street. But I can tell you that they kept my attention to the point to where I wanted to see it again. Ladies and gentlemen, the Spook Hunters, when they came up with that originally, shame on them. Because that was what they referred to as a posse. A mob. And what they did was they would chase after runaway slaves. And the last episode of 61st Street was the lawyer, the guy acting as a lawyer, who I liked the character and I liked the portrayal of that particular lawyer. I like his stance. He spoke about what people refer to as racism. I've been explaining to people, racism is not a, you know, people, well, I'm so sorry you feel that you uh, have been discriminated against. Excuse me? Feel? You guys, do, do you understand the stupidity? Sorry, 
that is so small on my screen that I cannot see. Yeah, I want to manually reboot, reboot later. If I had just clicked next, whoo, y'all would have been like, what, where the, that mother, go, what the, he just shut us off? And so, I'm glad I didn't just click next. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I just need to express this because something compels me to talk about this. Like I said, I finally get it. I, I didn't get it at first. I give you my word I didn't get it at first because it didn't make any sense. Because I kept saying, where is the rule that somebody has to obey the police? Do you know what it means to obey somebody? You obey a god. You obey your parents. Where the, is the rule to obey the police? Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that comes from slavery times. You see, slaves were commanded to obey the spook hunters. If they told you to stop, you had better stop. If they told you to lie face down on the ground, you had better lie face down on the ground. If you did not, you were subject to be killed. You don't believe me? Go back and look and see if it's not the very same thing portrayed by the police department today. Go ahead. I dare you to find a difference. No, 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 no. See, there are going to be persons who are of no color who are going to try to chime in to this. I'm sorry, you non-colored folk. Y'all don't get to chime in on this one. Sorry, no, 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 sorry. You don't have a stake in this race. No, 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 no. You do not have an opinion on this issue. Some of you are going to say, that yeah, I do have an opinion. And you are the ignorant people of the planet. You see, you are in a position I've been in all my life, trying to understand where the, that obey came from. It wasn't until this morning and after watching that series last night that I realized why people of non-color tell people of color to obey the police. Why, 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 why every family of color talk to their children about having the <clears throat> talk. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that there were slaves in history who weren't black. I know that there were slaves in history who were accosted, assaulted, infringed upon, had their rights shattered. But, ladies and gentlemen, those are not the ones that they're telling to obey the police. Does anybody get what I just said? Those individuals are not the ones that they're telling when a police gives you an order, you had better obey. You have no idea how many times I've seen people of non-color not listen to the police and I'm going, oh my God, they're going to, oh, look at what they're about to do to this fool. And nothing ever happened. But then I do like everyone else when I see a person of color challenge what a police officer says. I cringe. You, you do the same thing because you know what's about to happen. Come on now. Hold on now. When you were watching the video with George Floyd, you know exactly what they were getting ready to do. George Floyd was trying to talk to them. They didn't want to talk to him. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I, I was just thinking to myself, where in the, did they get the right to just put their hands on you? You see, you put your hands on your property, something you own, something you control. Well, the first thing a police officer wants is, you're under arrest, and they want to start grabbing. Where did they get the authority to do that? Who gave it to them? You must understand where it comes from. You see, they were seizing property is where it originally comes from. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, go back and do the history. Here's the problem. I know I'm right. I know that I'm not wrong. Look, when I saw the TV series Shaka Zulu, nobody had to tell me that 
originally they were selling their captive you know the nations that they fought against the people that they captive they, that were captive in their militaries they were selling them as slaves to the so-called white men and that's how slavery started initially that there were these were individuals who were captured in a battle and they were sold as slaves that's been happening throughout history the israelites did it go ahead they even had laws that they were permitted to do that whether you think it's right or wrong that's history and then they brought in their superior military equipment and when trading crutches and lighters and things like that didn't work what did they do they realized Look at these uncivilized morons. We can just take what we want. And they started taking. And thus, slave trade. People say, well, the slave trade was going on long before then. Doesn't I don't care what was going on long before then. I'm letting you know that ever since I saw Shaka Zulu, I saw that it had nothing to do with color of skin. I saw it had everything to do with cheap labor. Same as today. That's how slavery is. It's cheap labor. But I saw how, because it was the African continent, <laughs> there were just too many people. They didn't go into China and do it because, Lord have mercy, that was too far to travel. This was Britain. Britain had colonies in Africa. So, man, that was easy. We had ships already traveling to and from, and we were robbing Africa of its natural resources. We could take and take and take until there is no more. So I understood this as a child. Nobody had to explain the details to me. I could see it in the logic. Just like I could see the logic in, you must obey the police when they tell you. Look, I told you guys, those of you who know of me, that I have always challenged i've always asked questions i have never just accepted something just because somebody said that's the way it is police officer pulls me over i do like every other person of color including persons of non-color the first thing i say is excuse me what did you pull me over for in other words mother what are you bothering me for? That's what I'm doing. I'm asking questions. I ain't challenging nobody's authority. I'm saying, who do you think you are? What gives you the right to exercise authority over me? You better explain yourself. Literally, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that because I'm trying to be difficult. I'm saying that because mother, you a man just like I am. Look here, you a human just like I am. Look here, you ignorant son of a... What makes you think you're better than me? That's what I'm saying. Now, some people would automatically chime in and they would have an opinion on that. But they don't get to have an opinion on that. You see, what I just did is exercise a right. You see, I have a right to ask questions. I've had a right to ask questions the moment I was born. You know, like when that doctor ripped me out of my mother, yelling and screaming at her, and her yelling and screaming back at him. And then, wait, 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 hold on now. And then he gonna hit me? Oh, no, 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 no. You better believe if I had the ability, I would have hit that mother right back. You slapping me on my mother. You know, that's what I would have been doing. From day one, been asking why, why, why? From day one, every human, every child has been asking why, why, why? If you don't believe that Adam was asking why, why, why before Eve, then you really don't understand. So I understood only after a moment why. I hear so many television programs, so many news programs with individuals who are non-color speaking. Now, the White House has this openly so-called gay uh, 
foreign or from a different country as White House press, blah, blah, beep. Who cares? But she's a person of color. So I don't give a... What the... Ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, a person of color from a different country is not the same as a person of color in America. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. They experienced some racism, blah, blah, bleep, bleep, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? It ain't the same thing. But I was watching uh, uh, YouTube, and I just clicked on it for a second because it was Fox News. And you know, they're fair and unbalanced. Fox News, fair and unbalanced. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. I'm uh, not Fox News, fair and unbalanced. Because they said they're fair and unbalanced. They are fair and unbalanced, and you don't get to challenge that. Ladies and gentlemen, and the first thing they had was a token person of color talking about another person of color. You could tell he was a token because of how he was talking. You could tell he was a token because of how he was talking. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care about no stupid White House press secretary. I don't know that woman. That woman don't mean nothing to me. I ain't never met her. She's not my hero. She doesn't represent me. She doesn't represent my interests. But they want to make it look like every black person speaks for every black person. Every person of color speaks for every person of color. See, we're the only people in society where they hold us accountable because of what another person of the same color or another person of color has done something. Go ahead. Look at George Floyd. When they talked about George Floyd, they attributed George Floyd to each one of us. To each person of color. Each male. George Floyd. Why? You, 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 wait, 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 wait. He, well, he ran from the police. He ran from the police? So what he ran? Does that give you a right to shoot him? Now, George Floyd didn't run from the police. I'm talking about the other incidents where people have run from the police. Does that give you a right to shoot them? Ladies and gentlemen, do you not understand the police have always had the right to kill persons of color? Go ahead. Since they were the spook hunters, the ones who chased after runaway slaves, that's where the police departments got started. Before it was just the sheriff. Go back and take a look. Police departments came from spook hunters. The sheriffs were always there. They were protectors of the town. They had their little deputies but they weren't police departments. Police departments came from spook hunters. Individuals who chased runaway slaves and they had a license to kill. Go ahead. Spook hunters didn't arrest quote-unquote white people unless they were accused of aiding and abetting the enemy. You talk about trading with the enemy act, there was a trading with the enemy act already in place when it came with and to people of color. You see, ladies and gentlemen, nobody is bringing up what I'm talking about right now. Nobody's talking about the systemic racism that's in this country. Yeah, yeah, well, we hear about black lives shouldn't be mattering, and black lives should matter, and black lives matter. We hear about all that junk, but that's not the issue. People are being arrested every single day. People are being pulled over, and nobody's accusing the system of racism. Now, if you look at the last episode of 61st Street, you'll see that they're talking about jury nullification. He, literally, he is doing jury nullification. Why? Because nobody's paying attention to prosecution. They keep talking about the law. I like that episode, how it talked about, well, Slavery was the law at one time. Go back and take a look at it. He brought up the fact that interracial marriage was against the law at one time. He talked about a lot of things were, that were lawful or legal. Let's not use the word lawful. That would be wrong. He talked about a lot of things that were legal. Legal, ladies and gentlemen. He talked about a ton of things that were legal. Ladies and gentlemen, 
that are not legal today. Because I, I have told people in the past, there used to be this thing called the law. I am the law. Excuse me, mother, you ain't nobody's law. You don't get to make law. You guys, people are not understanding how this stupid country was invented. When the United States was put together, please understand, John Hansen, a person of color, the first one to run the corporation, he was <laughs> put in place because apparently nobody else wanted the job. And he was a person of color. So don't think that this country started off as being racist. You, you'd have the wrong understanding. Yeah, yeah, yes, they had slaves, but just like people are starting to learn, not everybody of color in America came from Africa as slaves. They had people of color already here in the Americas that weren't brought over on ships. I don't know why everybody keeps thinking that every person of color came from Africa. Well, that's because civilization started in Africa, you ignorant mother... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, you ignorant, stupid moron. When the people migrated to different portions of this world... We have the understanding because of what they taught us in those stupid schools of stupid education that black people before the 16th century, they only existed in Africa. They didn't exist in any other country. When you saw them in other countries, that's because they carried them like roaches from one apartment to the next. When they moved, they had it in their luggage, and there you go. An infestation. <laughs> okay. That's what history teaches us. History teaches us before the colonials, colonialization, these so called people of color didn't exist anyplace else. That they had to be transported. Look, even Joseph Smith. Who the is Joseph Smith? Well, he's the individual from where we get the organization known as the Mormons. Joseph Smith talks about the Laamites and the Naamites because even he was aware that there were tribes of individuals of color in America. Yes, we can pretty much call them tribes because that's how they were. And they were already here. And yes, of course, there was subjugation of those groups as well. I don't have any proof of the subjugation of those groups, but I guarantee if you do the research, you're going to find that I am 100% correct. Without even having that information. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, logic. Remember, they used to stop every person. 12 years a slave. You seen that movie? You talk about a movie that I had to watch over the course of weeks because it was causing so much anger in me. Yes, in this so-called country, a person of color, we have to explain ourselves everywhere we go. We don't get to just be, especially if you are a male. Ladies and gentlemen, now you'll start to get why there are more persons of color in jail than any other race. The system has never changed. The spook hunters are still the spook hunters. Wait, wait, didn't hear me? Let me say it again. The spook hunters are still the spook hunters. Police are still trained to look for runaway slaves. Anybody who's bucking the system, anybody who's challenging massa, Gets arrested. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Here's the, here's the best part about it. No, no, they're put in jail until they can make bail. Told you we we're going to get back to money. So, ladies and gentlemen, you want to make bail? Highlight the fact that the law says dollar for dollar. See, bail is only to make sure that you appear. You don't want to appear. Appear means submitting to someone's jurisdiction. Bell is only to make sure that you appear in court. 
So tender a dollar. Follow me. Y'all just need to pay attention because you can always bring this up on appeal because they cannot deny you bail, nor can bail ever be excessive. And so in 1933, Congress reduced the bail for all mankind. What did Congress do? Congress said, we're going to make every bill equal. Dollar bill and coin equal. A coin dollar is no more greater in value or worth than a paper dollar. Don't tender a penny. No, 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 seriously. Because you'll have to do a lot of explaining. But you can tender a dollar and then put in the congressional record. Ladies and gentlemen, when you put in the congressional record, I am going to suggest, and I'm going to do this for you, because who else could do it for you but me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, God. Do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to go to Amerilegion. A-M-A-R-A. -A -A. Hey, thank you for blocking that, uh, AdGuard. Yeah, I got the AdGuard blocker on here. Uh, we're going to go to this one, the PDF. It's already open. We're going to switch to that tab. It says it's already open, y'all. And thank you for blocking another ad, AdGuard. Man, AdGuard is doing his job. Look at that. That's AdGuard, y'all. AdGuard is just like, I ain't got time for no ad. So I've got you. I got your back, homie. Because I ain't no police. So I'm going to have your back. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do is you're going to go to the House of Representatives. And you're going to go to the Senate. Okay? That's the two you're going to focus on. And you're going to do the Senate June 5th, 1933. So you can just look for the June 5th, 1933. That is the Senate talking about a dollar bill. Okay? Not so much this Senate report. No, we want to deal with June 5th, 1933. The reason why I'm going to have you guys focus on that is because that's, and here's the other June 5th, 1933. There are three of them. And the other one is the House of Representatives. So we got to go to H. Okay? I'm telling you, there it is right there, House of Representatives. Those are the three. Eventually, I organized. I just had to put a bunch of stuff up there that y'all ain't had before and put it in one spot. But stick with the June 5th, 1933. Ladies and gentlemen, when you stick with the June 5th, 1933, you'll see what Congress intended on equal power for every dollar. That's what you're focusing on, the equal value for every dollar. So when they're telling you to post bail or you have to post bail, well, tender a dollar to the court through the registry. Even if you have to, if they refuse it, say, oh, no, you cannot refuse legal tender. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody knows who refuses tender in this country. They cannot refuse tender. And if they do refuse tender, then now you have something to appeal you really need to pay attention. This is, I'm not bringing up no fantasy. I'm letting you know. This, I know who, who am I to tell you guys what tender is or tender is not. I am not nobody. I don't get to tell you what tender is. Congress tells you what tender is. Go back and look at Congress. They have explained what tender is. Like I said, don't take my word for it. Go read for yourself. Now, if if you got somebody who's in jail and their bill is $100,000, pay attention. Now look, if you got somebody who's in jail and they, you know, they, they did whatever it is they've been accused of and they are a minister to society, don't help that mother. Okay, I'm, I'm just being real with you. Why would you help somebody who's out there damaging and causing harm? Okay, uh -uh. I ain't got, I, I know, I know, I know. If their rights are being violated, that's another thing, okay? Then you can help them. Why? Because even if a person does wrong, you don't have the right to sit up there and cause them harm and abuse their rights. Everybody deserves the right to due process. That means to be treated fairly, to be put through the same process as everyone else. That's where your equal protection comes from. It's the due process clause. It's not from the so-called equal protection clause. They add it to the 14th Amendment. No, equal protection was already there. It was already included in the law. 
when they said we, the people, the people already decided that they didn't want to be treated differently. When I brought up the fact about Mr. John Hansen, about how he was a person of color, that slavery hasn't always been here in this country, in this, when I say country, I mean North America as a whole, including Mexico. Yeah, the Aztecs and the Mayans, they had slaves too, people. The so-called native tribes of America had slaves. The Eskimos had slaves. Every community in the world has always had slaves, including the individuals of the African nations. Yeah, everybody thinks Africa is a country. No, no, Africa is a continent with a bunch of nations in it. Just like Canada. You know, it has a bunch of nations. They just, the British just came and colonized it. And the reason why Britain could colonize Canada, because it's full of ice. Nobody wants to live in all that ice. Pretty much uninhabitable. What you talking about Canada for? I live in Canada. Well, you keep living there. Nobody else, you're going to be by yourself. Nobody else want to live in Canada. Well, why are you Americans coming over here? Because we stupid. Yeah, that's what we say about y'all all the time. So, that the point is gotten, as was mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, I can't make you understand that a dollar pays everything. Now, you can't go to Walmart and say, I want to buy the entire stove for a dollar. It doesn't work that way. A dollar is dollar for dollar. Only for the discharge of obligations. Pay attention. The act only speaks to obligations. The act only speaks to obligations. You can't force anybody to take a dollar bill from you unless there is an obligation. And then you can bring in the UCC. You're in court, they're going to say, did you tender payment? You're going to say, I tendered dollar for dollar the equivalent of what was given. They can't foreclose on me. Look, I don't have time to work out how you get to explain this, how you get to prove this. I'm giving you guys the information where you can find it. They've already told you, every dollar has the same power. Equal power, equal value of every dollar. I've known about the equal value of every dollar all my life. I don't remember not knowing. And I took it literally because I'm the literal person. I was a literal person as a child. I'm a, if it doesn't make logic, it don't make sense. Is a coin phrase that I coined at the age of around nine years old. When I first saw Star Trek. And Mr. Spock, and he talked about logic, and I started listening to logic and understanding logic, and I'm like, wait a minute, that right there, okay. And and I started seeing how everything was logical, and if it doesn't didn't make logic, it didn't make sense because man, that's not logical. Why would you do something like that? Oh man, mother, you're stupid. You know, no, I didn't do that to people. I didn't call people stupid because that was, but I call people stupid now. Stupid is, stupid does. Forrest Gump's mother, that, that woman was a genius when she said stupid is what stupid does. So I'll call somebody stupid in a minute when they sit up there and do something stupid. Stupid. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I knew that there was equal value for every dollar. I tell everybody the story about several times in the quad. Now, I, I, I didn't do this in all of the schools I went to, but I did it at Westchester. Sat up there and tore up a dollar bill, a hundred dollar bill in front of everybody, just ripped it in half and threw it in the air. Why? Because I knew it was just a dollar. I knew it then. I knew that it said that this note is legal tender, good for the payment of all debts, both public and private. Ladies and gentlemen, it used to say that whole phrase. Now they've gotten rid of some words. Why would they do that? So that people couldn't readily see that bill for what it was. Okay, 
it literally I got I got a dollar bill right here. I got two of them, by the way, that I'm gonna send to the the Federal Reserve Bank. You know, cause it, let's say there's a car out there I need. Well, I'm gonna send to the Federal Reserve Bank, and I'm gonna send them that contract that I get with the dealership. And I'm gonna say this needs to be paid, and this needs to be paid in a timely fashion. And if they don't, ladies and gentlemen, because they need to discharge the debt that's been created. If I got a car and it's the only car I have, and I want to discharge that debt, remember you can't do you can't have two cars, people. You really need to understand that. You can't have two homes. Every persona in America, every person in America has the right to one house and one car and a dog and a white picket fence. That's where the American dream comes from. Well, what if a family has four children and a mother and a father? Then, ladies and gentlemen, they have a right to six homes and six cars and six dogs and six picket fences that they can sit up there and make a movie about. Every person in the nation has the right to one of each called the necessities of life. Do your research and see where the American dream came from. 1933, where government promised to take care of your necessities. Some of you are going to understand this. Some of you are going to get this, just like some of you got the money videos where I sat up there and explained to you currency and I showed you the so-called HGR 192 and I showed you the wordings of Congress and I showed you that you're the creditor because unlike those other people who are out there doing videos and just talking I show you what I'm talking about so that you'll know this video I'm not so much showing. I have work to do this morning. I've been up since uh, 4.30. It's now 7 o'clock. I promised my team that I would get something done for them this morning. Well, three things. I finished two of them yesterday. And working on this final thing. And it's for Amerilegion. Um, again, I am burning candles at both ends, on the sides, and in the middle. Okay? Eventually, there ain't going to be no more candle, just a flame of fire. That's going to eventually burn out. Not joking. That's a perfect analogy as to where I'm headed. Not burn out to where I'm going to die. Not going to die. Not that type of burnout. Burn out to where... I'm expending too much energy, and I have these energy deficient disorders. Don't talk to me about no stupid remedies. I ain't got time for that stupidity. See, when I tell people in the past about my health, they all want to make suggestions. Ladies and gentlemen, it would be fine if it was just one thing that was wrong. It would be fine. It would be fine maybe if there were two things that were wrong. So let me make it let me let me let me run it down to you. Liver disease, kidney disease, heart disease, lung disease, and then brain damage. Then malignant hypothermia, then myasthenia gravis, the muscular dystrophy. I I could go on. You see, this was all caused by the doctors. These are all side effects of what these idiots did. Don't worry about it. The God I serve, his name is Jehovah. As a matter of fact, in the background, I'm actually listening to what Jehovah's Witnesses refer to as Kingdom Melodies. That's what's playing in my background. If you can't hear it, that's too bad because it's not meant for you to hear it. That's for my getting through my days. Okay? So, with that being said, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say have a coconut smile because I've done what I came to do. I've conquered! <laughs> I, I've conquered! But remember this, the police are not your enemies. Most of them 
they're just following policy. They are not trying to be anuses, literally. But you have a lot of them that are trying to be anuses. They lie like everyone else. They plant evidence. Now, I'm not saying they do it all the time because they don't, but they have this thing about a brotherhood, about the fact that they're brothers or something and that they have to stick with the majority. Ladies and gentlemen, if you belong to any organization and you have to stick with the majority, even though they're wrong, then you're the stupid person. I've told everybody, when I was a child, my mother and my father allowed me to say, wait, wait, wait a minute, what the, how, how, can, how can you do that? How can you say that? How can you? My parents allowed me to question. I cannot begin to tell you how pleased I am to this very day that I got to do something the rest of y'all didn't get to do. I got to ask why. I got to say, what are y'all doing? No, you can't do that. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't you say this? Didn't you say that? I got to do that. All of you, you didn't. Many of you got slapped. You got ignored. I, When I questioned my mother and my father, they knew I wasn't being disrespectful. They knew I was just asking. They knew I was trying to better understand. And what did they do? They allowed me to better understand. I can tell you, I believe that that was the biggest difference between me. And then as I was growing up, if they told me something about the Bible, I got to ask why. Wait, how is that so? And they showed it to me. Now, I say, though, they, both my mother and my father, my mother wasn't a Jehovah's Witness, but she had studied with Jehovah's Witnesses, so she knew some of the scriptures, and so she could point me to the scripture. But then I also liked the fact she would tell me, no, go look it up. Literally, go look it up. Where am I supposed to find that? Well, start opening it up and look for yourself. And I got to search the scriptures for myself. Not to come to my own conclusions, but to see what it said and compare it with itself. And then there was my father who would come in and polish it up by saying, okay, well, compare that with this. Okay, so what is it saying? I like the way my life was growing up. I didn't have the perfect life. I was the oddball. I really was the oddball in the whole family. Nobody else acted like me. Nobody else was like me. But I liked the way I was allowed to think. I was allowed to come to understandings without being made or told what to think, what to believe. Now, mind you, you can't change a fact. A fact is a fact. I was allowed to understand why it was a fact, understand the logic behind the fact. That's what I was allowed to do. And I said allowed because in most other families, you are told what to do, what to believe, how to believe, when to believe, what to believe, where to believe. Okay? I, my brothers and sisters were basically told. I wasn't. I was allowed to ask. I was permitted to ask. I was permitted to challenge. I was permitted to, wait a minute, what? No, -uh, no, no, uh -uh, that don't make no sense. What you talking about? Wasn't able to do it that way, but you know, basically I was able to do that. All right, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I'm not going to have many of these conversations. As a matter of fact, uh, aside from probably one more video this week, because we definitely need to hammer the money thing. I've already put out more than enough. I promise you, go and look and see if anybody's talking about the things that you've heard me mention over the past week. Go ahead, I dare you. And if they are talking, you're going to see that they're talking from the standpoint of where I left off or from the standpoint of where I was talking or trying to critique, or trying to add. They can't. They don't have that. 
ladies and gentlemen, they they can't. They don't have the ability because they're not self thinkers. Everybody who's doing videos, for the most part, listen to how I did the caveat. For the most part, they are doing it from the standpoint of regurgitation, just repeating what somebody else has said, or telling you things you already know. Why? Because that's what they're used to. Go ahead. Everybody who goes to church, all of you who go to church, Tell me how often you go there and you don't learn a single thing new. That it's just a regurgitation of what you already heard. Go ahead. But I can definitely tell you, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, how there is not a meeting that we have as an organization where I don't learn something. Literally. There are so many things that I am learning every single week to add to what I already knew about certain situations and things that it's bringing together the picture even more clear. That's my fortune. I'm sorry that a lot of people didn't have the same fortune. I'm sorry that a lot of people didn't have the same opportunities of thinking that I had while growing up. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't understood what this has all been about, this has been about my ability to think. I am addictive to thinking. You're addictive to thinking? I'd be addicted to thinking, but since you're addictive to thinking, you are unique. Your mama's unique. Don't be sitting up here critiquing my words. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. He was correct. I'm addicted to thinking. Thinking is my euphoria. Like I told you, the first thing I thought about was the spook hunters and the police and why they act and why, man, like I said, I realized why people of non-color would always talk about people of color obeying the police. No, hold on, no. See, this is where people misunderstood. We always talk about blacks having to talk with their children about the police, but sorry, people of non-color have the talk with their children about the police as well. The police are there to help you. The police are your friends. So if a police officer comes to assist you, then you just sit there and you do what the officer says, son. So trust me, ladies and gentlemen, everybody has a talk about the police. It's just not along the same line. Does that make sense? Because it made a whole lot of sense to me when I thought about it. It made a whole lot of sense when I thought about it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go and schedule some appointments. So I will leave you all to your day. Have a good day, everyone. And we shall talk when there is another opportunity. Adios.